An ablation procedure involves delivering radio frequency energy within your heart to try and fix abnormal heart rhythm problems. Uh, ablation techniques and duration times vary depending on the type of condition you have, but in most cases this involves passing a thin floppy wire via the vein in your leg called the femoral vein, and that acts like a motorway which runs from your leg all the way up to your heart. By putting a small sheath into that vein, we can pass the wire into the heart, find the abnormal area which needs treatment and deliver treatment at that point. It's a very safe procedure with very small risks, um, but most people have absolutely no problems. Ablations are generally extremely safe. Depending on the type of ablation you're having, the most common risks tend to be bleeding and bruising at the top of the leg, bleeding around the heart, a very small risk of needing a pacemaker, and potentially a small risk of stroke. These risks are all very small cumulatively though, and most patients have absolutely no problems during their ablation. What are the success rates for ablation for SVT, or supraventricular tachycardia, are very high in the high 90s in terms of percentage. Um, so this is really a curative procedure and it's now offered to patients as a first line treatment, even before medications because the success rate is so good. It's done as a day case procedure and the complication rate is so low. The success rates for atrial fibrillation ablation vary depending on the type of atrial fibrillation you have. If you have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, which is where the ablation comes and goes, um, then the success rates are, are very good um, and we're quoting patients between 80 to 85% uh, success rates, which may occasionally need a second procedure. If you have persistent atrial fibrillation, where your heart is in an irregular heart rhythm all the time, the success rates from that procedure are slightly lower. But it really depends on other things, such as how long you've been in AF for, what your heart chamber sizes are, and your other conditions, such as high blood pressure or, or diabetes and coronary artery disease. So it really is a bespoke, individualised decision as to whether you will benefit from ablation or whether it's better to continue on medication.